Talking Real is back in 2021 with a bang, and this week we're bringing you all of the contract changes from the Oklahoma Real Estate Commission. What better way to start off the new year, but with some contract form changes. Welcome back to Talking Real, brought to you by the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. It's 2021. And Nabil, how's your 2021 starting out? I want to know more than just your day. We've been off for a couple <laughs> weeks, but now we're getting back into the swing of things for 2021 with our first episode of the year, episode 151. So how are things starting in your world? Things have started off well. I'm still surprised that it's 2021. Like, I yeah. feel like that last portion of the year flew by. So it's, it really I did. mean, you can go around asking people, how's your year? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been um, 2020, 2020, what a wild year that was. And it, we're just starting off 2021 with some more of the same. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're remote here having to come to you from our respective work from homes because uh, yeah, COVID is a thing still. And um, it didn't go away. It didn't go away. It didn't go away (laughs) as it turns out. And so we're um, still having to do a little bit of work from home. So just, you know, keep all the people out there that uh, have COVID coworkers, friends, family, and all all so forth that have COVID. And we're going to hopefully get through that sometime this year. Right. Although there's any indication to what a record setting year this might be. I mean, January 1st, we had record-breaking snowfall, right? Yeah, we did. So we, are, we started off on that foot. <laughs> We're on the way. And then alien invasions will come later this year. That's, <laughs> That's the a 2022 the thing. That's, <laughs> 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 well, I unfortunately, I had to go to the dentist today, um, which, you know, I like my dentist. I, it's great. But I broke a tooth about a week ago. And so anyway come to find out now I've got to have uh, my wisdom teeth out. I've never done that. So I finally got that scheduled tentatively. I'm going to get my wisdom teeth out this month. Boom. That'll be fun. Do that. We should record an episode right after that. Yeah. Or in the middle of it, you know, why not? (laughs) And then also found out the bad news is that I also have another tooth that now has to have a crown on it Uh because of my wisdom teeth that were causing problems. And so get the wisdom teeth out, get a crown on. So I'm excited. It's the year of more dental work for me. I'm just so excited. Uh, <laughs> you sound excited. Yeah. Almost so as everybody... excited as our topic. <laughs> right. So I hope everybody else is, uh, you know, 2021 isn't starting out like pulling teeth because it's literally pulling teeth for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so on that cheery note, <laughs> We are um, excited. This is one of our favorite topics. I, maybe not Nabil's. It's one of my favorite topics. No, I enjoy it. I feel like I learn a lot every time we go through this. It's There's this constant cycle of the Oklahoma Real Estate Commission looking at contract forms and updating them and changing them. And so we're now on this cycle where they come out at the first of the year. It used to be kind of a weird cycle. You didn't know when they were going to come out towards the end of the year, but sort of standardized it to where... Now they come out January 1st. So the new contract forms are updated. They are on the Real Estate Commission's website and they're there for you to use, which incidentally, the Real Estate Commission has a brand new website um, and it's not just pretty. It it does look nice, but new (laughs) web services and all that. So if you need to update your license information, your renewals, all that, uh, continuing education, they're still rolling some of that out. But once it's all implemented, it's so much of a better system than the old one. Uh, brand new, state of the art, nice website. So go check out orec.ok.gov and see what they got going on. Get logged into their portal so that you can see how much easier it will be to manage your license. So that's good I, news. That's a good I did that. On. Yeah, I did that earlier today, and yeah, that website does look snazzy. Yeah, so, so a lot. Upgraded. It seems a lot more user fr- friendly. They will tell you this is no secret to anybody. Um, they would admit it. Their old website was kind of a train wreck. Um, very difficult to find things, just kind of cluttered, messy, and old looking. And so this is really nice. So really happy that was able to get done. Mm-hmm. 
But we wanted to talk today, at least as part of of some of the contract changes that are going on. Um, since they updated those, we always like to give you the heads up on what the contract changes are and what they mean. But I don't know that we're going to be able to go through everything today because it's there's actually a lot. Yeah. So we are going to kick 2021 off, well, at least January. <laughs> uh, in the coming weeks. In the coming weeks. In about three weeks, we'll be doing a Facebook Live with part two of the contract changes updates. Yeah. So, you know, put it on your calendars, set a reminder. Yeah. Get ready for it. <laughs> um, yeah. We're going to go live so you can watch it live. You can ask questions on the fly, um, but we'll also record it, put it out here on a regular podcast feed. So if you don't catch the Facebook live, no worries, it'll still be available for you. Right. Um, today we're going to talk about the residential changes. So there's like the residential purchase changes in the, the residential purchase contracts and some of the associated addenda and things like that. And then for our Facebook Live, we're gonna primarily focus on all the new lease uh, contracts and documents that are out because those were 100% overhauled. They're brand new, completely updated. All the lease documents hadn't been looked out in years. And so there was a whole task force that was put together with people in property management uh, that helped put those together. And so this is it's great that those are out there for you to use when you need them. And so we'll go through those during our Facebook Live. That's right. And that will be tentatively on the 26th of January. Yeah. Which so is the last Tuesday in January. Get ready. Um, you know, hopefully I'll have my wisdom teeth out by then and <laughs> you can, I don't, I don't know. I'll be feeling fine. I'm sure it's no big deal. I'm a big baby about it. I'm scared. But it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Medicine has come a long way. Yes, it has. Uh, so anyway, enough about me and my problems. Let's talk about <laughs> the contracts. Nubil, what do you want to talk about first? I want to put the ball in your court. What sounds most exciting to you in these contract changes? Or do you want to start with the least exciting and build up? I don't know. It's your call. Uh, you know, me. let's start 2021 off with a bang. We're going to go straight into the escalation clauses. Oh, I'm... I'm trying to bite my tongue. That's the exciting stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we've had like, has it been three or two podcast episodes where we've talked about escalation clause? It's at least two, maybe a third one where we've talked about all the various issues that have come up over time with escalation clauses. Yeah. Um, I want to say for the record, (laughs) (laughs) although some disagreed with me from the beginning, I've said escalation clauses when done correctly, are perfectly legal and acceptable. Um, There was some question about that. There was some discussion through OREC and other people. I just want to, you know, toot my own horn here and say that I've I've thought that they were fine from the beginning as long as you do them right. And the Real Estate Commission recognizing that, look, this is a thing that will happen. This is something that people do. Um, It's out there. Then if if we're going to accept that, then maybe our best bet is, let's create a form that makes sure that it's done correctly. So if people want to use escalation clauses in their offers, they can do that. And we're going to make a form as an addendum that you can attach to your purchase contract that helps you do that to make sure that it's done correctly. And it advises the buyer of some things they need to be aware of. And so we've got this brand new form for an escalation clause, which I think is great. I'm glad that they looked at this and said, look, it's happening. So let's make sure that it's done the right way. Right. Um, and I think that's good. Yeah, I think that'll avoid a lot of questions. I mean, I'm sure there'll still be questions, but it'll avoid some of that confusion and people wondering how they can execute these. So absolutely. Uh, that'll be good. So it's got, you know, it starts out, it's got a little notice to the buyer. Um, and it's nice and bold here. You should not offer more than you are willing to pay for the property. <laughs> you shouldn't have to say that, but we do. Um, because if this gets accepted with the escalation clause, people need to be aware of that. And um, it also builds in if they've got the purchase price. Um, so they'll have the, the purchase price. Um, and then it has an increase. Uh, you know, if there's a competing offer where that escalation kicks in, and then it has a maximum of not to exceed a maximum purchase price of X, because there have been some issues where people didn't use that maximum price in their escalation clause. And somebody ended up buying a property for tens of thousands of dollars more than they ever 
uh, anticipated. And so that helps build in a little protection there as well to give you the final price. Also talks about financing and how that will work. There's some, some options there, um, some requirements of the competing offer. Um, so it talks about that, you know, the competing offer has to be a legitimate offer. You can't just make up an offer from somebody just to, you know, take advantage of this escalation. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's got some restrictions on there, what that competing offer looks like. So it's a legitimate good offer. Um, and then goes through just some of the other disclaimers, agreements of the parties, everyone that needs to go take a look at this, you know, this is something that can come up, familiarize yourself with this form. We could probably spend a whole episode talking about justice form. Maybe we will someday. I don't know, but <laughs> it's possible because there's a lot of information here to talk about. This is the right way to do an escalation clause if you're going to do it. And I suspect that most people probably aren't that have used it. Maybe don't have quite as much information as what's in here. Um, but yeah, it's uh, something that is out there now that you need to be aware of. Right. I think that can be part of maybe the Facebook Live. We can walk through the form, uh, you know, just for like five or 10 minutes on there. And so if people have questions, that'll be the perfect opportunity for you to interact with, with us and get those questions answered. I think that's a great idea. So go take a look at the form again. It's on the OREX website um, under their contract forms. And you can find that there. I mean, it's labeled as escalation, uh, escalation addendum form. So check that out. Take a look at it. It's about a page and a half long. And so this is a really interesting change that there's been a lot of talk about. So check it out. It's important to know that's there. And, you know, the, the forms aren't required. You don't have to use the standard contract forms, um, but I think it's a good idea. Also, some, you know, insurances, may require it to cover you that you're using contract forms. I, I'm aware of some that are like that. So it's good to know them, to be familiarized with them and, and really use them if you need to. So check that out because that is a big one. That's a big one. Yeah, for sure. And that was one that I was most excited about. Yeah. Since we've talked so much about it, you are That's one right. of Oklahoma's foremost F experts on escalation clauses. <laughs> That's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, All right. Goodness. So next up, back. it's good to be back indeed. So next up, uh, the residential property condition disclosure statement. Yeah. Uh, seems like there was just a little bit of, just a tiny bit of cleanup. Yes. I <laughs> am excited about this actually. I think this is, this is important. This is an important change. So what happened here is they've just updated and cleaned up the residential property condition disclosure form. Um, the first thing they did is they added the actual statutory definition of defect to the form. When you looked at it before, what, basically what happens is the, the law requires you to disclose defects and that has an actual definition and I'll go and give it to you because it's, it's great. It is a condition, malfunction or problem that would have a materially adverse effect on the monetary value of the property or that would impair the health or safety of future occupants of the property. That's what defect means under Oklahoma law. And that's what has to be disclosed based on this form. So the problem was they were using this, this word defect throughout, but it, they didn't provide the definition. So I thought that needed to be in there and they, they've added that now up there towards the top to say, this is what defect means, um, which is, is great to have that in there. It's just to give that little extra information. But also because that's a defined term in law, the form also was using the word problem in various places. And problem is not a defined term in the law, only defect is. And so everywhere it said problem. So it's like identify, a, is there a problem with the sewage, for example, rather than say a defect. Mm -hmm. And so that needed to change as well so that it's all consistent. It's all under this defined term in the law because problem, who knows what that means? It's not a defined term. It doesn't have any definition to it. So anywhere that it said problem has been changed to defect and they added in that definition of defect, um, which I think is, is great. I think that is a really good cleanup on the form that will make it a little bit clear, especially to any buyers that are looking at it and sellers. They just, they need to have that information and make it clear what we're actually talking about. So I think, I think that's great. Words matter. I say that all the time, words matter. And this is one of those cases where because words matter, they really updated it to really comply with what that law says and to make it consistent. So I'm excited about that. It's yeah. not really substantive that much, but it's, it's a good change. 
Yeah, I think that's good, especially the definition. So everyone's clear on what it means. And like you were saying, problem could mean one thing to me and another to you. Like it could be a problem for me, but it's not necessarily defective. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, problem. I mean, that could be anything. Right. It could be anything. Per- personal problems. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So um, what's next, Nabil? Next up is the residential sales contract. Yeah. So to the actual base contract itself. So this is the, you know, the primary contract um, that we're looking at that, that everybody deals with. So not, not the addenda or any other supplements or anything like that, just the contract itself. And there's a few little cleanup things at the start of it on page one, where you, you know, like you check the box of what supplements or addenda are attached. And in this case, they just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Um, they combined the condominium association and townhouse association supplements to be on one line. You know, those aren't used a ton. And, and so just having it on one line is a little bit cleaner. They also added in a space for Native American guaranteed loan supplement um, because that was, a, it's a common type of uh, loan that's gotten here in, in the state of Oklahoma but there wasn't any place to check that box that that may be something that's attached as a supplement. So they included that, which is really just kind of a cleanup to make sure that all available options are there, uh, which is great. And then a little bit more cleanup language is on the very last page where the, um, after the signature line, you know, there's a space for the associates information for whoever the realtor is that's helping. Um, but it didn't have a space for phone number. So they added in phone number because, <laughs> you know, title companies will use that or whoever to make sure they've got the contact information, but phone number wasn't there, just an oversight. So that got added in, which is also fantastic. Um, they've added in a choice of law and forum provision. And this is pretty straightforward. Basically what it means is if there's a dispute um, that, somebody would have to eventually go to court. It's very common to have these in all types of contracts. So that if there's a dispute, what law are we looking at? Where are we going to adjudicate this and that kind of thing? And so this just says that if there's a dispute, um, it'll go under the laws of the state of Oklahoma is what we'd be looking at. um, And that any disputes would be decided in either Oklahoma state or federal courts in the state of Oklahoma. So You know, if you've got like a buyer who's in Kansas, for example, and relocating here and there's a dispute, they're not going to be able to pull you into like Kansas federal court for some weird reason over a dispute about the property here that the contract was on. So um, that's kind of what that's intended to do. It's not a big problem, but it's something that it's easy to put in there. It's paragraph 15 in that contract. So you can take a look at that and see. But all that does is make sure that if there's ever a dispute and anybody sues anybody, it's going to happen here in the state of Oklahoma. Um, which is great. They also changed up the title evidence. So it's paragraph 10 has been um, updated and changed a little bit on, on title evidence. So take a look, there's not really like anything, I don't think there's anything too substantial about it, sort of a reorganization, kind of a cleanup. Um, I don't think there was anything that would change the way business is done or anything like that that goes in here. Uh, but again, take a look at that. If you got questions, bring those to the Facebook Live as well to see how that's been updated and cleaned up uh, because it, it is a little bit, it sort of, I think, streamlined it a little bit, made it look a little bit better to define what title evidence is and some of the various options that are underneath that. Excellent. So pretty, pretty straight, straightforward changes which is nice, which is always nice. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. And then last but not least for today's episode, the estimated cost to buyer section. Uh, It seems like they've just added a few more options, right? Or unblocked as they say on the forum. So you could, you know, actually check those. Right. So the estimated cost to buyer form that, you know, you're required at the time of, but when some, before somebody makes an offer or accepts an offer, you know, you've got to provide that net to the seller or the estimated cost to the buyer. And so OREC, there's, a, you know, different ways this is done, but OREC provided a form for it. And one of the issues that was raised is that I guess FHA and VA loans used to have certain requirements for 
fees that the seller must pay or that the buyer cannot pay. And that has changed to where it's opened up a little bit more how the fees can be adjusted between the buyer and the seller. So we're talking about things like the lender inspection fee, tax service fee, shipping fee, underwriting fee, those kinds of things for VA loans and FHA loans. Um, there's basically, they made it to where you can actually fill out those spots on that estimated cost to the buyer for those types of loans before it was blocked out because those were things that the buyer could not pay. So they wouldn't be in the estimated cost, but now the buyer could pay them. And so they're now unblocked. So you can use that form to fully fill that out. And it, you know, form helps you kind of walk through and, and track what those costs are, add them up at the end. And that way you've, you know, given the buyer all the information that you're required to give them under Oklahoma law that requires to provide that estimate. So that's just like, again, clean up pretty straightforward, um, but something that was important to get fixed and cleaned up, which is really what, what we did this year. Yeah. Got, got fixed and cleaned up. <laughs> Absolutely. So again, nothing too crazy. Um, the biggest thing is that new form, the escalation clause, es escalation addendum that was added in. That's really the big thing. And then again, just some cleanup on some of the other stuff to make sure it's updated, current, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, there'll be more changes this next year. There's always some amount of changes. If you've got changes that you think need to go before the contract forms committee, let us know. Send us an email. Um, I mean, you can just send it right here to us at podcast at okrealtors.com. That'll still get, get to me and I'll make sure I'll take it to the contract forms committee, or you can reach out directly to the Oklahoma Real Estate Commission. Their executive director, Grant Cody, is always happy to have a chat with people about contract forms, those kinds of things, and get it before the committee because um, the committee will be kicking off here, I don't know, this month, next month to start the process over again for, for this year. It's an ongoing process. Absolutely. I'm excited about the Facebook Live because, like I said, this is going to be primarily the, the lease agreements that we'll talk about. Maybe go back through the escalation clause form in a little bit more depth as well. But the lease agreements are completely revamped. Um, so that's great. There's obviously been a lot of things that have happened in state, you know, state law, whether it's medical marijuana, those kinds of things that need to be incorporated and, and fixed up and, and all that. So these should be good forms ready to go. And we'll talk about those in more depth as we get closer here in a few weeks to that Facebook Live. That's right. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button so you know when the next episode is out and set a reminder for January 26th we will be on Facebook Live. We'll make sure to get that information to you on future episodes as well. And on Facebook itself, we'll set up an event and uh, you should invite yourself and your friends. There you go. Can we Instagram Live it too? Yeah. Yeah. We'll just go live everywhere. YouTube Live as well. YouTube Live <laughs> and everywhere you will be able to find us. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in back in 2021 for our first episode, 151, kind of wild. But we're excited to be back. Um, hopefully next week we'll be back in the studio so you get that clean audio. We apologize for having to give you the Zoom audio this time. Uh, but you know, them's the breaks. These are the times we're living in. We're doing the best that we can. And we appreciate you coming along with us every week here on Talking Real. Um, so again, go check out OREC's new website, OREC.OK.gov. Check out the new contract forms and send us your questions. You can either bring them for the Facebook Live that's coming up or send them to us ahead of time and we'll actually be prepared so you don't have to put me on the spot <laughs> like Nabil loves to. You can email us at podcast at okrealtors.com. And until next time, we'll see you next Tuesday on Talking Real. You know, I'm going to have some questions for you. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs>